understand this point but that's not the worst case in my opinion. As Pyongyang once said, girl groups dances require more flexibility, fluidity and it might doesn't match with the boys dance style that they learned when they were trainees. Same goes for girls, expect for some groups like 2 Ni one Girl Kind and Luna, the choreographer asks them to do fluid and graceful dances, with not so many popping. Female idols who train to hip hop or at least other dances then idol dance can dance easily, to boy groups dances, and it goes for boys. An example of this are Kaeryong, Jimin, Hoya, or Dreamcatcher and Luna. But if it's still a respectful cover, like Hwan Woong or Moonbin, I still think those covers are better than just boys or girls covering a song from the other genre just for fun, like we see in idol shows. This make me uncomfortable, most of the time. Minji, Joy, Yuna, Jimin, Sujin and Yu Jiam say hi. At Sungri Stan, I experienced this. I tried to think and convince myself that I was supporting only his music and not him in particular, but I was feeling guilty for listening to him. He wasn't my bias anymore, that's for sure. And I was only listening to songs I already downloaded, because I didn't want it to give him money for his actions. Then a case of a pedophile film producer winning the Caesars happened in my country. And I understood that it's not okay to separate the artist from the person, because they are the same. Then I officially started to stand Big Bang OT. 4 and got his name out of my mind for good. Of course, it depends on what they did, if it's a racist or cultural appropriation scandal and that the idol apologized and educated themselves after it, I still listen and support. For example, the idols included in the Burning Sun scandal. Or, in the soon to be released, list of idols who were in the nth room, there is no way supporting them is okay. If you really love their song, I think it's misplaced to listen to them, but it's my opinion, you don't have to agree. I wanted to make a video about streaming you. I don't really like streaming when it's forced by the fandom, the fan bases, the comments and your whole Twitter timeline. When I stream, it's because I like a song and just repeat it to enjoy myself and listen to the song, but I saw some fans on Twitter that are using all the electronic devices in their house to play the MV, what's the point? If their microwave could go on YouTube, they would stream with it. It's okay to replay the song, but when it's too much, I understand that YouTube can't detect which views are from fans and which views could be from bots. Especially when half of the globe is using 8 phones to stream 1 MV, of course they will delete views, because it makes no sense. In my opinion, it's logic. Just one hour before writing all of this, we got the results from Ultimate Asian Heartthrobs of 2020 inches and BTS replying was ranked much lower than the vocal line. People in the comments of my country's fan base were saying that it quote unquote doesn't matter because they're talented. So yeah, it works for BTS, we don't care because they're hella popular, and even the least popular BTS member is more famous than some countries in this world. But for smaller groups, trainees and the industry in general, beauty standards are a big part of the game. Doesn't matter if you're talented, can sing, dance, rap, beatbox, do backflip and cook a paella, if you're not pretty, then you can leave. It's how it works. Same goes for diets, cute concepts and edges, plastic surgery and all. It's not wrong or good, that's how it is. My country have some habits that could look stupid, dangerous and disgusting to other countries, but that's how it works, so try to understand K-pop a bit better. Like the person said in the Reddit post, I'm scared they're trying to repeat the dynamic in which BTS started their careers, forcing them to the dynamic started from the bottom now we're here, and coming from nothing stereotype. Of course they shouldn't get privilege just because they're rookies under this company who's now owning billions of money, but the bare minimum is a do, for them to be comfortable. Bigot has money, unlike how it was with BTS back then so the least they can do is make their groups at ease, because they can. Some companies are struggling to avoid bankrupt and still give their best for their groups to be comfortable, so a big agency like Bigot could and should provide this. I saw many armies mocking Sons when Kick It won it first music show, just because they were celebrating to have win against BTS. I tried to explain to them that it's because it's a big achievement to win against such a big group like BTS, who's literally running the world, and they wouldn't listen. 
Some armies are mocking groups who doesn't get many wins, or mocking the way some fandoms are celebrating for only one win when for some people, one win is a lot. I hate that BTS struggle to get their first win and now that they get many at every awards shows, some armies are just forgetting how impactful a win can be. I think the fact is that part of the armies who are acting this way arrived in the fandom when BTS was already a popular group, if not the most popular group, so they sometimes forget where they're coming from. I even saw a few armies degrading small companies who debut boy groups, accusing them to try to recreate the stereotype we were talking about earlier. Please, when your fav faced so many struggles, it's just stupid to answer the same way they got treated. It. Thanks, DSP Entertainment for not putting that fan service here, it's so nice. I like Troublemaker and Triple H, but they weren't group I stand and appreciated, because the couple dynamic was sexy when you discover it but it's soon getting boring. Instead, all of them being badass queens and kings, minding their own business is more stunning than anything else. That's way more interesting, and, not gonna lie, paradise for queer people. People. When I first read this opinion, I disagreed. Then I thought for a while and realized that yes, deep lyrics can look alike a lot. The only one I trust on deep lyrics are Stray Kids, G Idol and Bang Longa, because it's not always the the love is making me suffer, I'm strong even if I'm broken, I miss you you're my love, I want to die because I'm suffering what can I do not to suffer anymore. It's a globalization of course, I don't know every groups and I would love to discover other not generic deep lyrics. But yeah, this opinion kinda makes sense now. That's right. Even if some groups does try experimental songs like Stray Kids, Dreamcatcher, it never really worked out well for them, seeing their current popularity. In the meanwhile, SM is out there making songs like Zimzalabim, Firetruck, Electric Shock or Lucifer and those songs are the one who brings the public's attention to the groups and make them popular, so yeah he's kinda a genius for that. This can be linked to streaming. If you don't like the song, don't force yourself to stream, it doesn't make you a bad fan. K-pop stan culture is learning us that standing a group means supporting and liking everything they do. But being a human being means having a critical look on everything, and it's okay if you don't like a song from your favorite group, it doesn't make you less of a fan. It even makes you an intelligent stan, and I think it's pretty Except when the cameraman is filming the audience for half of the time, I never really saw camera work that were terrible as you guys call it. Some of them can be livelier, but when I watch some performances from a static camera or a phantom, it can look boring, when the live stage with camera work isn't. I think camera operators knows their work, don't worry, and most of the time, they're filming what we ask them to film, they don't have a free liberty. Views become a problem when you are on the point of thinking that 100 million views in 24 hours is the bare minimum for a comeback to be successful. Plot twist, it's not. For many groups nowadays, it's incredible when it goes upper than 5 million views in the first day, or even the first week. I hear a person saying that streaming is a way to thank the artist for his song, and help them to become even more successful. But girl, are you really scared of other groups when your group's last comeback hits more than 50 million views in less than a day? Of course, views are important, but it's not that serious, and it shouldn't be such a big deal, especially for big fandoms. If big fandoms all watch the MV three times, it would still do a number of views that some group will never achieve in their whole career, stop asking for too much.